ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد Praise be to Allah Azza wa Jal we seek his help his forgiveness his guidance and his refuge we seek refuge with Allah Azza wa Jal from the evil within our souls and from the evil of our bad deeds Whomsoever Allah Azza wa Jal guides, there is none who can misguide. And whomsoever Allah misguides, there is none who can guide. I bear witness and testify that Allah Azza wa Jal is the only one worthy of worship. And that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is his last and final messenger. All praise is due to Allah Azza wa Jal, the one who has blessed us with this day of Yawm al-Jum'ah in which we can all gather together. All praise is due to Allah Azza wa Jal, the one who has given us our greatest blessing, which is that of our Iman. May all our last words on this earth be, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and say Ameen. Because there is no greater blessing than that. When we leave this world, we leave behind all of our possessions. Every worldly achievement or accomplishment that we have made will be left back. And what will move forward with us? And the answer simply, my dear brothers and sisters, is our deeds. The actions that we have done every second of every minute of every day is what will be moving forward in our book of deeds. And so that leads me to the topic of my khutbah today in which it is ihsan in all of our matters. And what is Ihsan? Ihsan is excellence in our faith, absolute perfection in our faith. And so when we make dua to Allah Azza wa Jal, you make dua to say, Oh Allah, please make me be among the Muhsin, those who are able to perfect Islam. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, it was narrated actually in two hadiths before I get to the ayah that the angel Jibreel asked the Prophet Sallallahu he asked him in a narration he came in a white clothing as if he didn't even travel and no one recognized him and amongst the questions he asked the Prophet Sallallahu tell me about Ihsan and so the Prophet Sallallahu he said أن تعبد الله كأنك تراه فإن لم تكن تراه فإنه يراك. To worship Allah Azza wa Jal as if you see Him, and although you cannot see Him, indeed He sees you. And so Allah Azza wa Jal, as we know, is the greatest. It is indeed an amazing expression, carrying in it a tremendous truth and a tre- and a remarkable trait. These are words that carry within them the greatest foundation upon which Islam is built and its structure. To worship Allah Azza wa Jal as if you see Him. And if you cannot imagine that Allah Azza wa Jal is seeing you, know that. And if you cannot imagine that you are able to see Allah Azza wa Jal or know that Allah is always watching you, know that Allah is always there looking at you. And so a foundation upon which all of its system 
ordainments and directives are based. Every single thing that we know of, every single system that is based upon us, it's indeed the system of our life. And so when you worship Allah Azza wa Jal, as if you see Him, your actions become so much more sincere, so much more pure. For example, a child when they're growing up, the child when their parent is around versus when their parent isn't around is two different children, right? Because the child knows that you as the parent is supposed to discipline them. Is the one, if they do a good action, you will reward them. If they do a bad action, you will reprimand them. And so if, you, if the child knows that you're always around them, always watching, they're gonna be on their best behavior. And so in the similar case of a believer, of a Muslim, if you're always imagining that I know Allah is always right there watching me, every single one of our actions will become so transparent, so clear, so honest. And so the saying of the Prophet وسلم, is the interpretation of Ihsan indicates that one worships Allah in this manner, which is to be aware of Allah's closeness to every single one of us and that Allah is right before us as if they see him. Because it necessitates a feeling of awe, a feeling of fear, a feeling of reverence and glorification of Allah Azza wa Jal. And that is what Ihsan is. That is the best of Iman, as mentioned by scholar Tabirani. And through this one attains the promise of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah says in Surah Yusuf, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُ الْحُسْنَ وَزِيَادًا For them who have done good, in the, is the best reward and even more. And in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ indicates that even more is interpreted that when we go to Jannah, even more indicates that we will be able to see the face of Allah Azzawajal in Jannah. And this is fitting as a reward for the people of Ihsan because Ihsan is that believers worship their Lord in this world in a state of presence and in a state of mindfulness. As if they see Allah with their hearts and look at Him during their worship. So their reward is to actually look at Allah in the hereafter. And so the opposite of this is what Allah informed about the recompense of the disbelievers in the hereafter. Allah says in Surah Mutafifin, Indeed, from their Lord that day, they will be partitioned. Allah made that a recompense for their condition in the worldly life. And so just as metal rusts, our heart is able to rust. Not physically in the sense that we know, but rust accumulates upon their hearts until there is a veil over your heart from knowing Allah Azza wa Jal, and if you are not mindful for him in this world. So the recompense of this is being veiled from seeing him in the hereafter. And so Ihsan, as explained by the Prophet Wasallam, should manifest throughout the entire Muslim community and in every aspect of our affairs. A Muslim judge is not expected to be unjust or unfair when he is watchful of Allah as if he sees him. It is not permissible for him to place his whims and desires above the justice demanded by him. Rather, how can a person incline toward injustice while the one who watches over him says, Be just. Because that is nearer to righteousness. And Allah says, And when you judge between people, judge with justice. And so Ihsan enables not only the judge, but if we think about it in every aspect of our life, it enables a spouse to live together in kindness, each safeguarding the other's honor in their absence. And the fear of Allah Azzawajal, and the watchfulness of him reminds them of Allah Azzawajal's words about Prophet Yusuf. In which Prophet Yusuf sa said, when she was in the house, sought to seduce Prophet Yusuf. She closed the door and says, come Yusuf. And he said, 
I seek refuge with Allah Azza wa Jal. Indeed, He is my master who has made good my residence. Indeed, the wrongdoers will never truly succeed. And so seeking refuge, seeking purity, and disavowing wrongdoing. Why do we do this as believers? Because we worship Allah Azza wa Jal with ihsan, with excellence of faith. And this is the goal of a Muslim. The goal is not just to be a basic La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah and this is it. I believe in Allah Azza wa Jal and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says whenever you aim for something, aim for the highest level. Whenever you ask and make dua for Jannah, there's how many levels of Jannah? But what do we ask for? We always ask for Jannah and Firdaus. Whenever we aim for something, we always aim to be the best because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says if you are not able to achieve the best, at least you will fall a little bit below that. However, if you look for your standard to be at the bare minimum, this is not what it means to be a Muslim. Regarding the scholar, how great is knowledge and how elevated is those who seek knowledge? For the most honorable pursuit and the best endeavor is seeking beneficial knowledge. It is the spirit that gives life to the body the luminous light that dispels the darkness of ignorance and it guides to the path of light. In Surah An'am, Allah Azza wa Jal says, أَوَمَنْ كَانَ مَيْتًا فَأَحْيَيْنَا وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُ نُورًا يَمْشِي بِهِ فِيهُ is in darkness, never to emerge from within. And so knowledge is only superior because through knowledge, Consciousness of Allah Azza wa Jal is attained. Otherwise, it would be just like every other thing. Therefore, whoever seeks knowledge in whatever field, in whatever industry, and performs good deeds and dominates others, and act arrogantly towards them, and showcase their knowledge to elevate themselves and their status above others, they are threatened with punishment. As Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman, may Allah be pleased with him, narrates that the Prophet sallallahu he says, Do not learn knowledge to dispute with the scholar, nor do not learn knowledge to argue with the foolish, nor turns to people, nor turn people's faces towards you. Whoever does that is indeed in wrong. Therefore, it is better for you to worship Allah Azza wa Jal as if you see him. For even though you do not see him, Allah Azza wa Jal sees you. Udru Rabbakum tadarru'am wa khufya innahu la yuhibbul mu'tadeen. Call upon your Lord in humility and privately. Indeed Allah Azza wa Jal does not like the transgressors. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. وَلِسَائِرِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْمَفْرُوضُ بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم Oh my dear brothers and sisters Whoever contemplates the words of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu about Ihsan, they will realize that all branches of knowledge and understanding go back to this hadith and falls underneath it. And excellence in our actions arise from Ihsan. Nothing except Ihsan. Whereby a person performs their duty in the most perfect manner in every action, in every aspect of your life. When you get up, you say your dua, you thank Allah Azza wa Jal for giving you another day of life because this is something that not all people are blessed with. You make wudu, you pray your tahajjud, you pray your fajr salah, you make your adhkar, you wait for ishraq, you go to your work, and your intention to go to work is to provide for yourself, for your families, so that you may give yourself sustenance, you may give your family sustenance, so that everyone can grow together and worship Allah Azza wa Jal. And so showing ihsan in everything, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, indeed, 
Allah Azza wa Jal has prescribed ihsan in all things. So when you do a sacrifice, sacrifice well. And when you are given an opportunity, give, do the opportunity well. Let each one of you sharpen their actions and let him spare any suffering. Islam is the religion of mercy. It is the religion of compassion. It is the religion of kindness, not only to humans, not only to animals, but to all living beings. It is recorded in the two hadith, while a man was walking along a road, he became extremely thirsty, and he found a well. And so he went down into the well, and he drank, and he came out of the well. And when he came out of the well, he saw a dog that was panting, and he was eating mud due to his severe thirst. And so the man said, this dog is suffering for thirst just as I was. So he went back down into the well, filled his shoe with water, held it in his mouth and climbed out of the well and gave the dog water. Allah Azza wa Jal, he appreciated these actions and because of giving this dog water from the sincerity of his heart, Allah Azza wa Jal forgave him for all of his sins. And so they asked, O Messenger of Allah, do we get any reward for being kind to animals? The Prophet ﷺ, he said, in every living being and every kindness to living being, there is a reward. And so conversely, on the flip side of this, there is punishment for those who harm animals and are cruel to them. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, a woman was tormented because of a cat she confined until it died of hunger. And so she entered the hellfire because of it. If such a recompense for someone who torments a defenseless animal, one, then what will be the fate of one who mistreats their parents? What will be the fate of one who harms their siblings and unleashes anger and great evil upon their relatives, upon their neighbors, upon their fellow believers, and upon society? Therefore, we must be conscious of Allah Azza wa Jal. Be mindful of your Lord and embody excellence so that you may succeed and attain the promise of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allahumma inna nas'aluka min khayri kulli ajilihi wa ajilih ma'alimna minhu wa ma'alam na'alam. Rabbana la tu'akhidna in nasina aw akhta'na. Rabbana wa la tahmil alayna isran kama hamaltahu ala al-ladhina min qablina. Rabbana wa la tuhammilna ma la taqata lana bih. Wa'afu anna wa akhfil lana wa alhamna. Anta maulana fawsulna ala al-qawm al-kafirin. Ibadullah, inna Allah yimun bil-adl wal-ihsan. وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعدكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه يزدكم واستغفروه يغفر لكم واتقوا يجعل لكم من أمركم مخرجا وأقم الصلاة
ولا يحض على طعام المسكين فويل للمصلين الذين هم عن صلاتهم ساهون الذين هم يراؤون ويمنعون الماعون الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفر إنه كان توابا الله أكبر سمع الله من حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله 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 Alhamdulillah, we had a good turnout, and Alhamdulillah, it looks like it's moving forward. So, inshallah, we continue on that path, inshallah, to get the period. I just want to announce uh, for all the sisters, um, age 13 to 24, we do have a Masala at 11.20 this Saturday. Please um, register your daughters, and all the sisters come out, please, to, for the Quran journaling. We have a new program we started here, and um, on Sunday, 11.20 to 12.20. So bring out all the sisters 13 to 24, inshallah. Also, we want to make sure that anyone who's parking in the street around here, please don't block any neighbor uh, driveway. So we're not sure if it's happening or not, but just want to make sure 
Those are some of the concerns of the people who said, want to make sure no one does it and can give us a bad name, inshallah. So please continue and follow the directions of the uh, traffic guide outside, please. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We just have a quick uh, dua to me, inshallah. A brother and his two children are extremely sick and has to make dua. Amin. Alhamdulillah, no min alameen, al Rahman, al Rahim, Malik, al Madin, ya Kabir, ya Kamistaiyin. Ihdin al Sunat al Mustaqim, al Sunat al Ladin, al Taaliyin. Ghayr al Maghub alim al Taaliyin. Ya Allah, thank you for everything that you bestowed upon each and every one of us. Ya Allah, O oh Allah, please help um, Brother Yaqub and Brother Zakaria in their sickness. Ya Allah, make them have a speedy recovery and take away their sickness from whatever the um, sick that they have, Ya Allah. O Allah, please accept all of our ibadat and all of our salat and all of our du'as, ameen. And O Allah, please make each and every one of us aware of all of our actions and make us have the extent in every aspect of our life, ameen. And just as we are gathered here today, Ya Allah, please make us gather gently for the devils together, ameen. Subhanahu wa rabbika 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 wa rabbika